very interesting uh, interesting week uh, a lot of things have taken place and uh, a lot of movement uh, as you all know with the, the, the situation with Greece talking about the Euro and the Eurozone uh, the, uh, we also have the end of the so called uh, Q2 QE QE2 uh, in the United States we are having the budget talks uh, about raising the uh, debt ceiling and uh, so there is a lot of things going on and there has been a lot of dialogues or discussions about what should be or shouldn't be happening um, again we keep this stuff in our heads and we want to take a look at what's happening in the market so that we see how the market is reacting or how people are now uh, adjusting their positions and setting up for all the sequence of events. I mean there is like so many things happening at the same time and we need to be uh, aware of what's going on so the first thing if you look at and this we were talking about from last week amazingly enough you can see the dollar uh, we had a from last week we were talking about the structure point of the uh, 75.50 and we did break above it and it took us to the uh, 75.94 or the 76 handle and we broke above it on Thursday and then we had a minor sell off which again it closed and this is the, the interesting part this is where you can begin to see that there is real accumulation coming in there is serious genuine buying so if you look at on this day which is Thursday uh, you see that it went all the way up 25 basis point above the 76 handle and then it turned back and it closed pretty much the close of the day was 75.90 which is at the handle I mean it, it closed at it now that is a sign of pretty good strength because upon the failure of a structure point you could expect or should expect to see capitulation but not having such capitulation is a sign of strength and the next day you have the we had the push up uh, above the 76 to close the week at uh, the 76.21 so that is, that is a serious sign of serious buying coming into the US dollar Now, Mr. Nex4467, please log out and come back in with your name. Uh, I don't allow people here with abbreviations in the room. Okay? So kindly log out and come back into the, the room with your full name. Okay? Thank you. Uh, the other thing, if you're going to look at uh, the other currencies I mean looking at the weakness if we take now the second step the uh, euro or the eurozone as a whole and what's happening so let's focus again on two things we're going to look at the euro and we're going to look at the safe havens so we're looking at the euro and the safe havens okay so the euro if we look at the euro for example you will see that the euro has capitulated uh, and it is now setting off and it closed the week and that's the index at 141.38 uh, if you look at the I mean that's the primary weak currency if you look now at the safe havens which is the uh, gold and 
this is the interesting part. That's why I'm taking you through this because it's it's very 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 interesting. If you look at gold. You see, gold has capitulated. I mean, it has sold off from 1,560. 1, it sold off in the last two days about sixty dollars. Sixty dollars decline from that, with keeping in mind the fear of what's happening in the eurozone. And this is supposed to be the primary safe haven, and you have this capitulation. If you look at the Swiss franc, and that is the index of the Swiss franc, even though it has touched an all time new high on Friday, that close on Friday is actually a sell signal for the uh, for the Swiss franc. I mean that is even though it is a break above the all time high now it came back and closed back below this and that is a sign of that's a sign of it's a sell signal as far as we're concerned having that kind of close <coughs> is a sell signal. So looking at this, uh, yeah, I can. I mean, I don't, uh, is this better? I'm trying to make sure that you all hear me well. Okay, is this better? Okay. So this is a, a sell signal. So now we have a liquidation in gold having gold having coming down about $60 from the high. We have the Swiss franc, even though during the intraday we had an all-time high, we had a failure and a sell signal. The guys that were taking the course last week, Manish, that is one of your turtle soups. Okay, so, uh, and Kenneth, I think, you were in the, the class, I guess. So, this is one of the uh, turtle soups <coughs> and that would be a sign of liquidation so we can we need to be careful now we're looking at the Swiss to come down and we have this very powerful buy signal in the US dollar okay and this major sell signal in the euro currency if you will if you look at the second currencies that are supposedly in a bull market, which is the Japanese yen. You can also see that we closed below the 124.78, so this is also a sign of weakness. It is not as powerful a sell signal like what we have seen in the Swiss franc. So if I look at the yen, yes, it's a sign of weakness and it is a sell signal, but it is not as profound and as strong as the one we have here in the uh, Swiss franc. Also, if you look at the British pound, you can see that this one now has just for the last three days capitulating from one from the 164, 62, all the way down towards the second structure point, which is the 159. 40 on based on the index we have a 159.80 on the uh, spot cash and also if you look at one of the other very strong currencies which are solid which for example the Canadian dollar and this one just went blue right below the, the 101.26 to close close pretty much at par which is now sitting at the 100 level or the one to one if you will that is a the par or the 100 even which is this number here is a very big psychological points with regards to all currencies so coming close about 90 pips away from that that is 
pretty strong. So you can see the selling coming into the CAD, the, uh, the selling that's coming into the pound, the selling that is coming into the euro. And surprisingly, again, you will see that the Australian dollar is also selling off. And this, again, because of virtue of this congestion that has been going on from mid-April up to now, it seems that it is rolling itself to the downside, and this now becomes our structural point that we should be looking at, again, as another sign of weakness. And last but not least, well, I think I covered them all, so uh, you can see that the strongest currency that we should be looking at this week to buy is by far the US dollar that is our primary one that we need to be looking at as the, the one that we are going to be buying now we're focusing because we have major buy signals on the dollar across the board and major sell signal on all the other pairs across the board I mean every every pair we're looking at pound, CAD, yen, Swiss, Aussie, Euro. Every single one of them has a sell signal on them. The question is, which is weaker than the other? Which one should we be focusing on against the other so that we can short them? So, again, so the, the one we have to buy is the, the dollar. And then we have a selection choice. So let's take the British pound again that is pretty weak so with that weakness again it is pretty close I mean if I have my structure on the index as 59.40 it closed the week at 59.56 so it makes our selling quite easy so the pound is also pretty weak I would say the same with the uh, let's take the, the, the euro because these are two profoundly weak currencies so I have the pound and the euro are at the same level and then if we look at look at the uh, the yen the yen is we should be kind of neutral because this is a sign of weakness it is not particularly too much of a sell signal but it's still negative so I'm just gonna give it like a one minus or so it's not as bad as the uh, the euro and the pound so but the uh, the yen is also weak so we're going to say, I'm going to give it one minus. And if you look at the Swiss franc, because the Swiss franc, as I showed you, is a kind of a turtle soup. So it's actually, even though it's an all-time high, this is going to be actually weaker than the, uh, the yen. And the same thing with the Aussie, as you have seen. And the same thing with the cat so if I'm going to plan my trades today I would be looking at the dollar number one and which ones should I be looking at here to go against to buy the dollar against uh, the yen and the Swiss franc have been in a profound long trend they have been in an extended up trend okay so they we might get some profit taking so I'll be looking at the dollar Swiss and I also will be looking at the dollar yen why because if people are going to be taking they will be actually selling the Swiss now or trying to buy the dollar Swiss cover their shorts in the dollar Swiss because they expect that the dollar will turn around so they will be trying to protect their profits with the uh, uh, in the Swiss and the yen pairs so they are a candidate for fast or what we call short covering moves uh, also 
of course I will have to keep an eye on the British pound and the euro but they had had an extended moves they moved a great deal I mean like what you've, if I show you what I mean here they have been moving now a few hundred pips the pound has moved through a few hundred pips so now I need to be taking looking at taking them but now I will be taking them once they break through a structural point or they break through a, a specific entry point a strong selling point I want to be rather cautious I want to take them short I'm not saying buy the pound or buy the euro I'm saying we have to short them but we're going to be specific in timing our entry in those pairs okay uh, then we have the Aussie and the Canadian they're pretty much in the same so even what we're doing today is we're taking them upside down we are going through the uh, we're going long the dollar but we are going to be selling or buying the dollar against the strongest so I'm buying the dollar Swiss, I'm buying the dollar yen, then the pound, the, or the dollar uh, Aussie and the dollar CAD. Last of my choices, yes, they are on my book, but I will be looking at the pound, dollar pound and the euro pound. The reason I'm saying that is that we had such an extended move in them. Therefore, I will be taking them, yes, in the same direction, but... You can consider this, guys, as what we call the, the big range rule. So with, with regards to the pound and the, uh, the euro, they are big range kinds of uh, rules, if you will, is going to apply in this case. If we look quickly at the uh, radar screen from last week, to see which ones were the ones that really moved uh, the most and gave us the, the most move, you can see that the dollar now the pound is below the 159 structure point the uh, even though the dollar Swiss is below the structure so it's short we have we're going to be looking at it in a different way uh, the pound Swiss is extremely uh, the pound cat ha is below the structure and below the selling point uh, we have the um, the Aussie yen is below the structure and below the short point uh, the euro swiss is below the structure and the short point and uh, also the uh, euro dollar has traded below the structure and below the so these are the ones that are we're going to be focusing on and they are the ones that has paid us from last week okay so uh, with that, let me uh, save this recording and then we're going to start doing them one by one, okay? So if any